Look at all that meat, guys. Right here. Ooh, fry it up. During our six-week trip to Asia, we spent a good amount of time in the island of Taiwan hopping from one major city to another. One of the most memorable parts of this adventure was the time we spent in the Taiwan harbor city of Kaohsiung, which offers visitors access to plenty of historical attractions and like all major cities scattered throughout this amazing country, plenty of great food. In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you what we did along with some of the top places we ate at from Michelin Guide to Night Market Street Foods during our two-day stay in this historic yet artistic destination. Let's get started. Our journey to Kaohsiung took place after we spent a couple of days in the industrialist city of Taichung. Before arriving in Kaohsiung, we decided to take a day trip out to the historic mountain village of Fengqihu, which is a must-stop destination for many visitors as they head in and out of the Alisan Township. This mountain village is situated along the Alisan Forest Railway that we took from the Chai Yi Station and it's a great place to stop and admire the historical architecture as you stroll through this old street town and the beautiful surrounding mountain views. There is plenty of food and snack options available for purchasing here as well as you make your way through. We picked up a couple of lattes from a local coffee shop for just 6 US dollars to start our day. One of the most popular food items that seemed to be on everyone's must-have list were the lunch boxes from the restaurant located in the Feng Chihu Hotel. You can choose to dine in or take out, but when dining in, the food is handed to you in a metal tin container where you're free to roam around the establishment to find a place to sit and eat. There are plenty of open seating tables available, but we personally enjoy taking our food up to the open rooftop patio to eat it while enjoying the open air atmosphere. The food itself was absolutely delicious and the bento boxes we ordered each came with a marinated chicken leg and a ribbon pork chop served with a side of white rice, half of a braised tea egg, along with some vegetables. You can even help yourself to multiple servings of a bamboo shoot based soup broth that paired very well with the food. The cost of two bento boxes cost us just under 12 US dollars. After departing Feng Chihu, we made our way down the mountain and headed towards the city of Kaohsiung where we would stay at the Kaohsiung Marriott Hotel. This hotel was located in the heart of the city with convenient access to public transportation like the bus and trolley systems. The hotel was spectacular, very clean, spacious, and situated along the Love River. We paid an average of 195 US dollars per night for our stay. This next place we visited during our stay is one of Taiwan's top tourist attractions and most popular places to visit in Kaohsiung. Fakuangsan, which translates to Buddha's Light Mountain, operates as Taiwan's largest Buddhist monastery and museum open free to the public. There are multiple ways to get here and the most affordable option to take would be by bus depending on your travel schedule flexibility. For us, we opted to take an Uber which cost us a little over 29 US dollars and took about 50 minutes from the heart of the city to get here. Upon arrival, the place felt very surreal, peaceful, and we were amazed with how massive the complex is covering multiple acres of land and quickly realized that a trip out here could easily be an all-day event depending on which areas of interest you are most wanting to see. At the main entrance is the visitor center where you'll see many beautiful statues, upscale shopping of souvenirs and artworks, and for those that are hungry, there are plenty of vegetarian dining and refreshment options available for you to choose from. Situated in the central area of Fakuangsan is the wide walk path encompassed by eight pagodas, four on each side, that symbolizes the great path to Buddhahood. The pathway, as you make your way up, ultimately leads to the big Buddha statue and the surrounding exhibitions including the museum underneath, each offering plenty of information and relic items for you to admire and learn about the teachings of Buddha. Overall, in coming here, the atmosphere at Fakuangsan is very peaceful and a place where one can wander around at their own pace learn from the various exhibits scattered throughout the museums and just soak in the breathtaking sights of the enormous structures against the backdrop of the mountainside. This next spot on my list is for those who enjoy street food and the night market scene. In Kaohsiung, there are many night markets scattered throughout the city. While we would have loved to visit multiple during our visit, we were only able to visit one which was the Liu He Night Market, located about 10 minutes away by taxi from our hotel. The market is tailored to tourists which was no problem for us and is situated along a busy street spanning across a couple blocks and is relatively small in size compared to other ones we've seen in Taiwan. However, it still offered a great variety of food options to choose from. We ordered items from the popular stall known for the oyster omelette that is smothered in a sweet and spicy sauce, 
soup dumplings also known as siulong bao, along with a few other items from neighboring food stalls including these diced beef cube steaks which satisfied my meat cravings but the highlight in this dish was the spectacle on how they were cooked with this intensely hot flamethrower torch. Overall this market offered us the same vibrant nightlife energy we've experienced from many other night markets throughout the country of Taiwan and if you have time to check out multiple while visiting Kaohsiung, definitely add this to your list. If you want to know more about the Liu Hei Night Market and our experience there, please be sure to check out the dedicated video on my channel. Right next to the hotel that we're staying at, the Marriott Hotel, there's actually a Costco. And uh, one of the things I've always wanted to do is visit a Costco at an international location. One of the things we came to straight away as we came into Costco was to look at the rotisserie and see if they sell the famous Costco chickens, which they do. They also have other things amongst the Costco chicken like buffalo wings and they have giant pork knuckles and then they sell a whole bunch of other frozen items that you just don't find in the U.S. and I wish they sold in the U.S. because we would, those things would fly off the shelves. They sell Din Tai Fung pork buns. So um, I, somebody has to petition that to Costco to sell those in the States because I think those would do really, really well. Let's go check out more. So that was a little quick detour. We were trying to get more footage, but like as people saw me filming and talking, they actually said that you're not allowed to film in there. So I wish I had more to share with you guys. But overall, the layout, the structure of Costco here is no different than what you see in the States or anywhere else. It's just the products they sell, right? And so some of the footage I did share, like the pork knuckles, the Din Tai Fung pork buns, it's gonna be unique to the region itself. So it's actually a really cool experience coming through. I wish I could have filmed more. The food court, I did get some there. Uh, they do sell the infamous Costco hot dog and amongst a few other unique items here to Taiwan. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Located within the Yancheng district along the waterfront is Kaohsiung's most popular cultural spot known as Pure 2 Art District. What was once an area containing many abandoned shipping warehouses, the district was transformed into a unique open art space that allows local Taiwanese artists and talents and environment to showcase their creativity and display their work. Strolling along the art district here in Kaohsiung, it's actually quite nice of a walk. It's right next to the harbor and the Love River. Uh, you'll see a lot of artistical structures and statues scattered throughout the different alleys and corners of the district itself. So it's a great place to kind of walk, kill some time, and just kind of admire the artwork that's been produced by a lot of the local Taiwanese artists. When visiting the Pier 2 Art District, one should also consider visiting the Hamasan Museum of Taiwan's Railways that is unlike most train museums I've ever seen before. The museum is located within the Art District and is a miniature wonderland that contains reconstructed miniature train tracks illustrating the last 100 years of railway development in Taiwan across the country through major cities and small towns. As you're making your way through the Hamasan Museum here, you'll notice a room that has these reconstructed miniature structures of like every major city here in Taiwan from Kaohsiung to Cheyi, Taichung to Taipei. It's pretty amazing how they were able to replicate how the train system interconnects the entire country city by city. Things I realized about the country of Taiwan and many of the major cities, and I've been here a few times in my life. If you've traveled to Asia, like, Taiwan and many of the cities actually seems like a mixture of Singapore and Bangkok. Uh, the cleanliness of Singapore and the pizzazz of Bangkok. So it's kind of like you get the best of both worlds. And uh, if you've never been here, it's so far we're really enjoying the trip. We always enjoy coming back here. Obviously on this part of the trip, we've been able to see a lot more cities and traverse the country. So a lot of it's new to us as well, but I'm um, always impressed with the food. The people are super nice. And it is a little bit, like I said, of Singapore and Bangkok combined. So here we go. Kaohsiung City, everybody. Now, if you've been following me on my food and travel journeys, then it should come to you as no surprise that we love to eat and indulge in culinary delights whenever we're traveling. So we are now making our way to get some dinner. It's early evening here in Kaohsiung, so we're actually craving some seafood. So Kaohsiung is actually a major port city here in Taiwan. So one of the best things to get when you're out here, apparently, is seafood. So we're going to try it out.
We just took 12 bus stops and we're currently walking. Did about five minute walk. We're coming up on the restaurant now. It's called Old New Taiwanese Restaurant. I believe they serve a fusion of uh, seafood specialties at this location. This actual restaurant is actually a no menu restaurant. So you basically serve what the chef prepares for the day using the freshest ingredients. So, and what we did is kind of like an omakase set. And so they actually brought us out our first few items, which is, it looks like it's actually a meatball dish, right? And the next one is actually a plate of sashimi. So we're gonna dig in. All right, so digging into the first piece of uh, sashimi they brought out. Dipped a little bit of wasabi, some soy sauce. Mmm, mmm, it's fresh. With the soy sauce and the hint of wasabi makes it perfect blend. Mm. Mm. So fresh. Sashimi plate, one of the things I'm really excited to try is this uh, fresh abalone. I don't think I'll be able to eat, eat all of this in one bite, but it's probably be meant to be a couple bites, so let's give it a shot. It's pretty tender. A little bit bouncy, yeah, a little bit chewy, but still pretty tender overall. Mm. That's pretty fresh, straight off the shelf. You can taste the seawater as you bite into it. So the next item I'm going to try is actually this meatball looking appetizer that they brought out. I believe you actually have to serve it with this gravy sauce right here. Go ahead and pour a little bit of that on, it's like a Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> okay, and then they give you these little scallions over here, or green onions. I think you're supposed to garnish it with that as well. Take a bite. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Nothing Asian about it. It's just like a typical meatball. The meat is a little bit more for me on the dry side, but it's very flavorful with that sauce yeah, it's and the green onions they put on it. Mm. Pretty good taste. I think it's to balance out like the mixture of sashimi, seafood dishes they give you with some meat. So give you this little side plate of this pork tendon, I believe. I can't tell if it's pork ear or some other part of the pig, but uh, it's actually really tasty. Mm. The food experience at this Michelin Guide recommended restaurant felt like a 10 course meal as the servers just kept bringing us food upon foods. Get all that meat guys, right here. Mm. Natural sweetness of the shrimp. Mm. And forget about all the head fat right there. Alright, right, so we're gonna dig into this crab here. It's a very tiny crab, looks like one claw, or actually two claws, or one claw. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start with that, that head fat right there. Right, there we go, all that head fat right there for some eggs. Might be a little bit pasty. Mm. Okay, so we just wrapped up dinner. It was pretty good. I mean, if you again, if you enjoy fine dining, uh, Michelin rated restaurants, this is the place to go. For the amount of food that we ordered, all that seafood with some sides of fried rice and soups that they served, it cost us about 100 US dollars or 3,000 Taiwan dollars. I would come back if I'm craving you know, good quality seafood. As part of this trip, we definitely wanted to try something different. So that was a nice little experience. Great service overall and uh, highly recommend it if you were to you know, look for that kind of food experience visiting uh, Khao Song here. We decided to swing by the famous Dome of Light that is situated at the Kaosong MRT transfer station before heading back to our hotel. Now Taiwan in my opinion has the best 7-Elevens on the planet. The variety and quality of the types of food and beverages you can buy at really low prices as an actual meal is just ridiculous. On this particular morning, we decided to do just that for breakfast before heading out to the famous Dragon and Tiger Pagoda attraction. Upon arrival to this must-visit attraction in Kaosong, we were disappointed to see that the two famous pagodas were under construction. However, we were still allowed to stroll through the pagodas and surrounding areas along the Lotus Lake for viewing. We actually made it out to the Dragon and Tiger Pagoda, but unfortunately, it's uh, quite a bummer. It's actually under renovation. It's behind me right here in the background. As you can see, there's a dragon and a tiger and they both interconnect. And the idea when visiting this dragon and tiger pagoda is you walk inside the dragon and the whole point is that you bring in bad luck, bad energy, and you turn that into good fortune 
by coming out of the tiger's mouth. So I don't know when it's going to be complete, but it looks like it's been under renovation for a while. At the recording of this video, I have been told that the construction isn't expected to be complete until early 2025. So we just left the pagoda, but this whole area, there's actually a boardwalk over a waterway. I'm not sure if this is actually the Love River, but uh, there's other sites to see some other pagodas. So we're actually going to go check it out as well since we're already here. In the two and a half days we spent here in Kaohsiung after visiting the mountain village of Feng Chihu, we genuinely enjoyed our time here. While the city is full of energy with plenty of things to do and eat, the pace at which it moves is much slower than what we experienced in the capital city of Taipei. In hindsight, we would have booked our trip to stay here for three full days instead so we could have visited more local food spots. I hope you found this video useful and if you're planning to come to the country of Taiwan, Kaohsiung is definitely a place you should add to your itinerary. Thank you so much for watching and if you want to continue following me on my food and travel journey, please like this video and subscribe to my channel.